like IBM, IBM they uh, thought 25 years ago the future of information technology is in highly centralized computers. They were the experts, like our energy experts. And uh, they underestimated totally what happens if there is a shift cost of the technological possibilities uh, from few um, demanders who order big uh, computer stations <laughs> to many, to millions. This changes all. And um, the, um, the same will happen and must happen with renewable energies. Um, it, uh, it is a fight, it is a structural fight. It is a fight between centralization and decentralization, between energy dictatorship and uh, energy um, participation and energy democracy. And because nothing works without energy, it's a, a fight between um, democratic value and, and technocratic values. And um, therefore, the uh, um, um, mobilization of the society is the most important thing. And as soon as the society, most people, have recognized that the alternative are renewable energies and we must not wait for others. We can do it by our own, in our own sphere, um, uh, together in cooperatives or in the cities or individually. As soon as they recognize this, um, they will become supporters. Other, this is the reason why we have now a 90% support against all the disinformation campaigns. They have much more money and possibilities to influence the public opinion, uh, but they lost this. They lost this conflict. In the eyes of the people, they lost the conflict. They are the losers already. German parliamentarian environmentalist economist Hermann Scheer. He died suddenly yesterday at the age of 66 in Berlin. We'll come back to our conversation, one of his last, in a minute. Here comes the sun, little darling. Here comes the sun, I say, it's all right. It's all right. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman, has returned to our conversation with Hermann Scheer, the German parliamentarian, economist, and environmentalist. He died suddenly last night at the age of 66. How could a green economy stimulate jobs and the economy overall? Because President Obama seems to have lost that or lost his way. He had lost his way because he has no majority. He must fight for majority, not in, in, in various fields. And therefore, he, um, he, cannot really, he cannot act really autonomously. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the situation in the United States. We have a strong president, but also a strong parliament. <laughs> also a strong parliament, a strong, a strong Senate and a, a strong House. And, um, the, um, this is, um, that means um, in such a structure, uh, many developments can become blocked. You're a federal politician in Germany. You have, half your life you've spent in the German parliament. Uh, Why, if you talk about everything being at the decentralized state and local level? Because um, that what happened in Germany uh, required before that in the fields of um, legal frameworks, uh, it was necessary to open the space for that, that the people can act. This was not possible before. Uh, the main work, um, political work, for the uh, support and help uh, for the uh, energy revolution through renewable energy is 
to open the space to create investment autonomy for renewables, to overcome so many direct and indirect administrative bureaucratic barriers which hinder the people to take renewables, uh, which hinder them. Yeah, and therefore, don't giving permissions for wind uh, mills in the, in, uh, in, in, the, in the counties, or don't, uh, or, or don't give permissions for solar roofs, and so forth, and so forth. There are so many, so many hidden, uh, hidden rules um, favoring conventional energies and blocking renewable energies in a decentralized way. So many. And, uh, and to overcome this requires uh, political decisions. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, what we need is the liberalization of renewable energy introduction. One of your first books was called Solar Manifesto. Your new book, just coming out now, is called? The Energetical Imperative. And the Energetical energ imperative. Energ in imperative. German, we say Energetisch. In German and in English. So energy and ethical. Energy and ethical combined in one word. Yeah, I show that um, uh, the, there are not only economic um, reasons, heavy economic reasons, um, to uh, shift to renewable energies. Uh, it is an ethical, an ethical must. An ethical must if we want to keep human society human civilization. How? Yeah, because it, is, it will become impossible if with the, uh, all the consequences of the conventional power structure and, and system, not only the climate conferences, uh, say us, uh, if we want to have, uh, to keep and uh, to, um, uh, to disseminate uh, democratic human values, um, it, is, it becomes impossible to do this on the basis of nuclear and fossil energy. Um, because nothing works without energy. Um, and energy dependency, like now, from big democratic states, from some feudal regimes <laughs> at some places in the world, means America is not independent. Is not independent. Not really independent. Yeah, uh, and um, the European democratic states are not really independent. Yeah, they are. They are. Um, um, they must follow. Uh, and uh, and if it, or they must uh, conquer these states. <laughs> yeah, Occup occupy the states or follow them, or take uh, or take care about them about the, the such relations. This is. Uh, an unbelievable situation. It endangers democratic. This situation of energy dependency uh, endangers democratic constitutions. Democratic constitution means self determination of a society, political self determination of society. How can a society self determinate in itself if the lifeblood of all activities is coming? From a uh, is uh, is coming from a from another one, and um, creates existential dependency. You write that a solar-based economy will overcome global economic disparities and right. the ongoing ecological crisis. And this, look to the third world countries. The same situation. They are. They have to pay. Um, with, uh, let's say, um, po possibly a grand national product of 5% related to Europe or to the United States, 5% per capita, they have to pay for the importation of oil, the same like we. With which money? They don't have the money for that. The reason is poorer and poorer people. The, uh, um, no, the result is, excuse me, the result is poorer and poorer economies. More than 40 countries in the world, more than 40 in the third world, have to pay more for the importation of oil than their total export earning is. That means it's over. It's over. 
if they want to um, promote uh, their economy, they need more energy. Uh, if uh, the energy bill eats all the coming revenues <laughs> by the promotion of the uh, economy, uh, they are in a, um, in a dead end street. And uh, therefore, and uh, the uh, the situation uh, goes down and down and down. Who speaks about third world problems and forgets this energy point? Uh, doesn't know about what he is speaking really. And therefore, um, this shows it, um, and is a, it is an ethical problem to help them uh, to uh, come from these imported energies to indigenous renewable energies. This is the only economic chance for them. The only economic, otherwise they will become poorer and poorer. And uh, therefore it is, um, it, is, um, it is not only, not only uh, a question for energy, uh, for energy consumption, it's a question for economic development. It's a, que a question of uh, <coughs> democratic for the survival of democracies. It's a question for overcoming the third world crisis. And uh, it is um, um, a decision to keep the human values. Finally, Hermann Scheer, what gives you hope? That um, I could uh, set um, an example in the political structure. Besides uh, all what I have done um, um, to enlighten people to take this opportunity, to go this way and to uh, organize pressure for that, uh, to uh, create a movement in the society, uh, that um, is, uh, it was possible to show a fast energy shift is possible. We have now encouraged by that, inspired by uh, the first uh, bigger steps, um, by the first many steps, um, that uh, nowadays more than 100 cities and counties in Germany have decided to shift to 100% renewable energies in the run of the next five, sometimes 10, sometimes 10, sometimes 15 years. And the number of cities who want to go this way increases from month to month. And this is a real democratic revolution. The U.S. is losing its manufacturing base, yet Germany is perhaps the leading country, if not the only one, that has increased its manufacturing yeah. base. How have you managed to do this? Yeah, this was because we created the market. With the Renewable Energy Act, we created energy investment, investment autonomy for renewable energies. That means more and more demands for um, uh, solar technologies and wind power technologies uh, were there. Uh, and this enabled the um, um, the uh, 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 industrial basis for that, uh, growing industrial companies for the producing, for the production of these technologies. Therefore, one element pushed the other. Uh, one element pushed the other and widened it up. And uh, a new move started uh, ecologically, economically, yeah. Uh, a new democratic move and um, and a new enthusiasm because the perspective of going to 100% renewable energies uh, is motivating many people because as long people think as long people think nobody can overcome this power structure nobody can do it uh, they lose their hope and you can only motivate uh, people into society with a perspective which is handleable and uh, which is not dependent on the question uh, if uh, th there are coming new decisions at, say, at the global level, at the summit, at the G8 summit, G20 summit, or at the World Climate Conference. No, uh, Will you be there in Kansas?